Hey everyone, this is Kathy from Kdale Handmade and I wanted to welcome you to my video tutorial for the Fundamental Tote from Jolie Lee Creations. This is a video that is part of the Marathon Society's um, Marathon Sewing Series and so this is the pattern that we are doing for this month and I'm so excited to be able to do this. I haven't made this pattern before so this is going to be super fun. Um, this again, like I said, is the pattern um, from Jolie Lee Creations and it is called the fundamental tote it comes with an add-on that you can do a um, center divider zipper pocket i am not doing that one on my video for today um, but that is available if you wanted to add that and um, let me just show you the bag that i made it is so cute you guys it turned out so cute i love this so these were new strap anchors for me. I had not used those before. And I also did the divided um, exterior pocket, or not pocket, panel. Um, so in the video, I show you how I measured that to get this. But yeah, look at that. So cute. And then I used for the straps, I used webbing on the um, back side, And then I used the matching vinyl. So again, here is the fundamental tote from Jolie Lee Creations. Um, a big thank you to Leslie at Jolie Lee for allowing us to use her pattern for the marathon um, so long today. And I hope you guys have fun and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today we're making the fundamental tote from Jolie Lee Creations. You will need the pattern to make this bag, and this is a PDF printout that you can get from the Jolie Lee website. You will need two exterior pieces for the main body. This is pattern piece A, and I've already cut mine out, and as you can tell, I am doing a split panel bag. Um, so I will show you how I did this in when we go over into the next step, but right, for right now I'm just showing the pieces. Um, and I've already, of course, added my logo tag here. And then you will need two of the same cut for the lining. So you have two exterior, two lining. Then you will need, this is pattern piece F, this is the slip pocket. You have one of those. Pattern piece D is the zipper pocket lining. You will have two of those and those are interfaced. So two of those. And then you will have a couple additional pieces. You will have your zipper pocket overlay, your slip pocket accent, of course your zipper. And I'm using, I don't know if you can see, it's a Haunted Mansion wallpaper. Here we go. Little wallpaper logo whatever this thing is. I don't even know what this thing is, but <laughs> I just know it is the Haunted Mansion wallpaper. So that's my um, zipper pull. Then you will also need um, some strap connectors. So on the pattern here, um, Leslie uses these kind of, I don't know, I guess they're called icicle um, strap connectors. I'm not really sure exactly what they're called or if they have additional names. I've personally never used them and I don't have any, so I'm going to be using these. Um, if you can see this. Here, let me take the plastic off. This is a strap connector that I got from So Awesome Supplies and it is a little Mickey head, mouse head, <laughs> so I'm going to be using those as my strap connectors. I have four of those. Um, the other things you will need is a length of strap. So Leslie gives instructions in the pattern for how to make your strap. I made, um, ahead of time, I did this strap for my bag. So again, I'm using the uh, lime green um, thread. That's what it's called, thread. <laughs> lime green thread I use the vinyl from the bottom of the bag and then the back I have again the webbing from the wallpaper so two of those um, and let's see you will also need your strap ends so I have four of those you will need some rivets to um, attach the ends of your rivets uh, of your bags together 
I'm also going to be using, I'm going to cut this up, I'm going to be using some Decoville Heavy and on the back of this as a stabilizer. You can use Decoville Heavy or Peltex or any firm stabilizer that you have. I just think that'll help to um, give that a little extra support and not pull on the vinyl so much. Uh, let's see, what else? I also have some chalk that I will be using to mark the pattern pieces. I have this tiny label. It's a woven label fold over that I'm going to be adding to my um, zipper pull or zipper overlay. I'm going to be adding it hanging down off the bottom of this on the inside of the bag. And then the other things that you will need, I would grab some, of course, I'm a huge fan of double-sided tape. So if you have some of that, um, you might want to have that handy. Have a little pair of snips and a heat erasable pen. That was the other thing. I knew there was something else. Um, you will need uh, a pen, a marking tool of some sort. I'm going to be using this. This is a friction heat erasable pen so I can mark on the back of the of the pattern pieces, the lining pieces. Um, and so that's it. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is a little bit of prep work on our lining pieces. So grabbing one of your lining pieces, you're going to measure down according to what is in the pattern instructions and you're going to draw a line straight across. This line I drew with chalk so that it will easily be able to be cleaned off. And then you're gonna flip it over onto the back. There's a separate measurement. You're gonna measure down, draw a line there, and then you're going to label this. This is going to be the zipper side. So just write that on the back of your panel piece. Okay, and then with your second lining piece, you're going to take that one and measure down again. This is a different measurement than what you did for the other side, so double check, make sure you're checking your pattern correctly. Draw a line there. Again, I did this with chalk. Flip it over on the back draw a line on the back. Again, the measurements are in the pattern. And then this one is going to be the slip pocket side. So I'm just writing that again on the back just so these don't get confused. Okay, so now that your lining pieces are prepped, let's move on to the um, exterior. Okay, for the exterior pieces, we need to prep these as well. So you're going to need a couple things to, the, to do this one. This one you need to mark the center of your panel. And I've just made a couple little notches here at the top and at the bottom to mark the center. You're going to flip it over to the back and draw a line straight down the center. Okay, and then there is a measurement you're going to measure over to the left and to the right. Um, first, we are going to draw a line across the top here. And then another one. Again, all these measurements are provided in the pattern instructions. Okay, and then the, from this line, we're going to measure over to the left and we're gonna draw a line down. It doesn't have to go all the way down. That's okay. And then same for the other side. Drawing the line here. Okay, there we go. So that's how your pieces are going to look. And we're going to do the same thing for the other exterior panel. Okay, now we need to install the strap connectors. So the pattern provides instructions for how to install the SIA swag strap connectors. Um, I am going to be using these, which have three prongs on them, which is a little different than what's in the pattern instructions. So I'll show you how I install these. Um, what you're going to need is your um, backing hardware. I don't know what this is called. Just this little bracket that goes on the back. 
You will need a craft knife or a seam ripper and of course a pen to mark. And then I'm also going to be cutting out some pieces of this um, Decoville Heavy that I'm going to be use, using as a, um, just a support for the back of the uh, hardware here. And I think I might leave these a little bit larger just because I wanna make sure that it really has a good amount of support. So I know this is probably way too large, but I'd rather have it be too big than too small. So I'm just gonna do that. I'll need four of those because I have four strap connectors. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to line this up. So taking the bracket, if you're using the size swag connectors, your bracket is going this way, but because my hardware goes this way, I'm going to be attaching the bracket like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just measuring it up. I'm lining it up with this top line here, putting this center hole measured or aligned with this line. And then I'm going to make two marks there. And then I'm going to do the same kind of looking at that in the center. That's about right there. Two marks there as well. Now this is where if you have a craft knife or a seam ripper, you're going to just make those two little holes in the stabilizer and in the bag. Now I will need to mark another line with this one. I will need to mark another line because I have the additional um, bracket here. So let me see, since this bracket does not, you know, it's not a, a, a T or a triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in here, make a little mark a little indent here so I can see where that hole should be. And then I'm just going to make a small little slit there. And then I'm going to use this again. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but for me, um, this works <laughs> for me with my brain um, and how I organize things. So what I will do is right now I'm just using this as a placeholder so I know where to go into the center here. So I'm drawing through this line onto the fabric down here. And I'm a little bit off of that center line. I don't know if you can see my, my hardware is already trying to poke through right there. So I know that this is where the hole should be. I'm just going to make a little hole there. Okay, now we can put it through for real. So we're going to put the hardware connector through. And then I'm going to attach the Decoville Heavy. Putting this strap or this um, bracket on the back of the hardware. And then I'm just folding all of the little tabs up to the top and then the last thing I want to do is I'm going to put a piece of duct tape over that bracket over the whole thing and that's just going to help to protect the fabric that might be backing up to this so it won't be rubbing against it and getting snagged and stuff like that okay so there is the first bracket super cute super cute okay so i'm going to do that for all four brackets and then we'll be ready to move on okay so straps are connected or anchors i should say are connected now i have never full disclosure <laughs> i have never worked with this kind of hardware before so i don't know if um this is the way you're supposed to use it or not, but this is the way I'm using it. <laughs> it works for my bag and I think it's cute, so I'm just gonna use it. Uh, now I will say, in case there were any questions as to how I did this, how I figured out where to make the split in the pattern, 
very simple. Um, let me just show you really quick the pattern. Um, okay, here we go. I don't want to show you the full pattern, but I will say that it is, when it comes in the directions, it is cut in half. So it is in two pieces. So basically all I did was I used this top piece, um, cut my panel, and then for the bottom, I used that, cut the panel, and I left uh, the seam allowance as it was, and then I just stitched it across here, and voila, a double or a two-tone double panel, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> exterior. Okay, so now the next thing we need to uh, work on is our straps. So let me put these main panels to the side. And for my straps, like I said, I already created my straps. There are instructions in the pattern for how to do um, full vinyl straps. Again, with this one, I did vinyl on this side and this is one inch webbing. So my, my measurements are different from what's in the pattern for the one inch webbing here. And then so that I had a little bit of a an overhang um, from the from the webbing strap, I wanted it to show through. So what I did was I measured this vinyl piece at one and five eighths inch, inches. And then I marked a line down the center, folded it, folded both long edges to the center, and then just laid that on top and then did a row of double stitching. So that's all I did for my straps to make both of my straps. So the last thing we need to do with our straps for now is we need to attach the uh, strap ends. So what I'm going to do is, this is the underside, so that is the side that will have the screws on it. I'm just going to set that there. You can add some glue, um, Gorilla Glue or um, Super Glue or some kind of, something similar if you wanted to do that to your strap end before you attach the screws, I am just adding my screws. Okay, so once you get that screwed in, that's what your strap end is going to look like. And I'm going to do that to the other three strap ends. All right, the next thing we're going to work on is our lining. So we're going to start with the zipper pocket. So grabbing your lining piece that you've marked as the zipper side, we're going to lay that right sides up. And then grabbing your zipper overlay. Now I cut mine a little bit differently than what the pattern calls for, but I'm going to lay it here, matched up with that chalk line that we drew earlier. So this is where I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the back of my overlay. And then I want to lay it centrally. So you could find the center marks. You know, you could fold this in half to find the center. You could fold this in half to find the center. Personally, I'm just going to eyeball it and then I will measure, let's see, about it's almost perfect. I just need to go light slightly to the left. Okay, so now that is there. I'm also this is where I'm going to be adding my little fabric label. So I'm going to just tuck that underneath. I want to make sure it's up far enough so that I catch it in the stitching. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch around the outside of this box only. 
So just stitching a line right on this outside edge. Again, that will catch my little label and then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so I stitched my zipper overlay on. My label, my little tag is caught in this stitching line and I left some long tails so that I can pull it through to the back side and tie it off. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling up. There's a little loop. When I pull the back string, there's a little loop that pops up and that brings forward. Let's see, this one's a little more tricky. I think because it's tight right in the corner, I stitched right on top of it. So hopefully I can get this one to come through. Yep, there you go. And then once the both strings are to the back side, then I just grab them two by two and tie them off usually about three times. And then trim, oops. there we go, trim that. All right, and there we go. And now by doing that, by leaving that long string, you can't tell where I started and stopped stitching. So you can do that, or if you prefer, you just do a, a couple start and stop stitches at the beginning and the end. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is cut out to the center. So I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter to make a line down the middle and then flipping it over to the back side. I'm just going to cut away the lining fabric only. So I just want it to be far enough back. It doesn't have to be right next to your stitch line. In fact, you don't want it right next to the stitch line because that might compromise your fabric a bit. And if it starts to fray, then it'll pull away and then you'll have a big problem. <laughs> so don't get too close to your stitch line. You just want it to be trimmed back far enough so that you don't see it from the front. And you can see a little bit of your zipper overlay from the back. So let me just finish this little piece here and I'll show you how it looks. So you can see there a little bit of the zipper overlay all the way around. And then from the front, you can't see any of that. Okay, so now we are going to put this to the side. We're going to grab our zipper lining panel and our zipper and we are going to put that together. Okay, so I'm just going to set this panel off to the side for now. And then grabbing one of my lining panels, my uh, zipper lining panels, I'm going to lay that down right side up. And then taking my zipper with the zipper close to the right, open and close to the left. So what I call the closed side is the flat side of the zipper pull. And then this is where you will open and close from. So I want that pointing to the left and I'm going to line that up right at the top of my um, zipper lining panel and clip it in place. Okay, I'm gonna take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to base stitch uh, right along this edge attaching the zipper tape to the zipper panel. Okay, that is basted on right there at the top edge. Now I'm going to take the other lining panel and I'm going to lay it down right sides up. Again, if you're using directional fabric, make sure it's the right way around. And then I'm taking my lining panel and I'm flipping the one that I just sewed on, I'm flipping that down out of the way and I'm going to line up my other panel, my other lining panel. So I'm lining up the sides and then I'm lining up the top of the zipper tape with the top of the panel. You're going to clip that all the way across. Okay, so making sure that your two lining panels are right sides together. With that clipped across, we are going to base stitch again, just like we did on the other side. Okay, you can see both sides are stitched on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down so that my lining panels are up, my pocket panels are up 
towards the top. I'm going to flatten this out. You can flatten this edge with an iron if you prefer. Um, generally, I just do it with my fingers. I think that works well enough. My zipper, again, is to the left when open and closed. And then I'm going to take some double-sided tape and lay it down each side of my zipper tape. Okay, then removing the zipper tape, the paper backing for the zipper tape. I'm going to remove that for both pieces. And if you can, you want to try and keep your zipper pull in the middle. Sometimes they don't like to stay in the middle. Sometimes they're a little too big. <laughs> so just do your best there. Now we're going to take our uh, lining panel that we completed earlier with the opening. And what I like to do is I just like to eyeball it centered left to right, make sure I have plenty of zipper tape overhanging on each side of that opening. And then just center your zipper tape in that hole. There we go, so it looks like that. Again, your pocket lining pieces are up towards the top. And now once you get your zipper tape positioned where you like it, we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to stitch down this bottom edge only. So again, you can leave long tails and pull them through to the back side, or you can start and stop here, start and stop here, but we're just going to stitch along this bottom edge first. Okay, stitched along the bottom edge only. I left long tails, so I'm going to pull it through to the back side each string I'm going to pull through to the back side and tie off. Okay, once those are tied off, we are now going to flip this lining down. And again, you can finger press it or take it to the iron board. You just want to Press that down and away from your zipper. And then you're going to flip this one down. And yes, they will be, one will be longer than the other. Flipping it back over. Now what we're going to do is start here, stitch up, stitch all the way across, and then stitch down to finish off this zipper box. Okay, that is finished off. Again, the last thing, that I have to do here then is again for the last time <laughs> pull the strings through to the back and tie them off. Okay, the last thing we need to do here is to close up the sides and the bottom. So you're going to go over to the sewing machine, pull this side away, stitch down to the bottom, turn it, flip this up, stitch down to here, flip it up, pull this away, and then stitch to the top. You can um, trim this away. I'm going to do that now just to make it a little bit easier. So whatever the extra is, you can trim away and that way your panels will meet up nice, nice and even. Okay. So we're going to take that to the side, sew around those bottom three edges, and then we're almost done with this panel. All right. Once you have that stitched all the way around, the last thing to do is we are going to trim it back um, by about half. all the way around.
Okay, there you go. Your zipper pocket panel is now complete. You can double check it, open it up, make sure everything looks good. All right, and now we are ready to move on to the slip pocket side. All right, for a slip pocket, you will need, obviously, your slip pocket piece. <laughs> and we're going to take it and fold it so that the short sides are together so it's long sides this way. So again, here's your lining panel, your slip pocket panel, and we're going to fold it so that the top and bottom meet. I'm going to clip the sides. And we are only going to sew down the two sides. So there is a measurement provided in the pattern for your seam allowance. So you will sew down the two sides only, left and right, leaving this top completely open. So just sewing down these two sides. Okay, so once that is sewn down the sides, again, this is left open. We're going to just trim these bottom corners. So this is the corner where the fold is. And we're just trimming on a slight diagonal up to the stitch line. And that's gonna help make it lay nice and flat and give us those pointy corners that we want when we turn it through. Okay, there we go. So that's how it's looking. We're gonna take it, I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine, not the sewing machine, the ironing board. I'm going to give it a nice um, press so it lays nice and flat. And then um, we will attach our accent strip to the top of the pocket. Okay, now that that is pressed, we're going to take our lining, um, our accent band that is going to go on the top of the pocket, flip it over and there is a measurement provided in the pattern for where you are going to draw a line. So it is a measurement up from the side, you're gonna draw a line straight across. And then taking your double-sided tape, you're gonna draw a line or lay a piece of double-sided tape down each side of that line. Now you might have noticed one of these sides, this line is not exactly down the center of this piece and that is how we want it. One of them is a little bit shorter. So the little bit shorter side, I'm going to remove the paper backing and I'm going to take my pocket and I'm gonna flip it over. I'm going to line it up on that line. So don't worry about if it's perfectly centered or not because we're going to be trimming these off. But what you want is like this. So your pocket, if you're using directional fabric, right side up, this is the front of your pocket. This is where the band is. Then you're gonna flip it over, remove the other side of that double-sided tape and you're gonna fold the panel over. Okay, I'm going to add some clips here. Even though I have the double-sided tape, I'm just gonna add some clips to help hold it in place while I am sewing. Okay, now flipping it back over, we're going to take it to the machine and like I said, you will notice that the back overhangs a little bit lower, and that's how we want it to be. Um, We're going to sew across the bottom at about, I'll do mine at about one eighth of an inch from the edge here. Um, you can add a double row of stitching if you like. I'll probably just add a single row here, um, but that's what we're going to do to attach the um, top band to our pocket. Okay, now that that is stitched on, what we need to do is we need to trim the sides so that they're even with the side of the pocket. And then you can trim any strings that you might have. All right, same thing on this side. We're going to trim this up. Now 
And I'm just going to take my lighter and just very lightly, very, very lightly singe the ends. So I only hold it on there for like a split second because I don't want it to burn the vinyl. So there we go. Now that we have that done, uh, we are ready to attach it to our lining panel. Okay, so grabbing our other lining panel, we're going to lay it right sides up, fold it in half so you can find where the center of your panel is. And then we're going to do the same thing for the pocket. We're going to fold that in half. And then right where the center is, we're going to match it up. So we're matching up the center fold lines and we're lining it up on that chalk line that we drew earlier. So now, let me see, I have pins somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to add a couple pins just to help to hold this pocket in place. And then I'm going to stitch around the pocket all three sides according to what is in the pattern instructions. Um, just one row stitching all the way around. Okay, pocket is stitched on. That's how we're looking. Now, if you prefer, you could always add optionally some rivets here to the pocket um, just to help give it a little extra strength. I'm going to leave it off on this one, but that is an option if you wanted to do that. Now to put our lining panels together, we're going to take our two completed panels, put them right sides together, lining up that bottom edge. So again, they are right sides together. Bottom edge is lined up. I'm going to clip in place all the way across the bottom. And then we are going to sew across the bottom only for right now according to the seam allowance that is provided in the pattern. Okay, so just stitching straight across this bottom. Okay, once that is stitched together, we're going to take it, open it up. We're going to butterfly these seams open. I think I'll take mine to the iron just to give it a good press to try to help hold it in place. And then once that is butterflied open, we're going to flip it back to the right side and we're going to top stitch according to what's in the pattern instructions, top stitch it down both sides of this center line. Okay, top stitched. So the bottom seam butterflied open and then top stitched. Now we are going to place the two panels back right sides together and we are going to clip along the short sides. And then we're going to sew the short sides together. Now I will make note that there is instructions in the pattern for what your seam allowance should be. And that seam allowance is going to change on this side panel. So you're going to start stitching the top of the panel at a certain amount, and then you're going to increase to a different amount to go the rest of the way down. So just make sure you make note of that. And that's just really gonna help to make sure that your lining panel sits nice and snugly inside of your, um, inside of your bag when we get it all done. So again, we're gonna stitch here, starting at the seam allowance, increase to what the other measurement is, and go the rest of the way down on both sides. Okay, stitch down both sides. We're starting to get a peek at what our bag is going to look like. It's gonna be so cute. Now what we wanna do, the last thing we have to do here for the lining to put this together is to close these boxed corners. So you're going to match up the center seam and then just butterfly open the side seam right here. We're gonna clip across and then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. There we go. And sew across according to the seam allowance in the pattern instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and box both of my corners now. I will take them then to the sewing machine and sew them up 
again, butter, butterflying open this corner. You're going to match up your two side seams. Clip in place. Okay, so I'll take these to the machine. I'll sew up the sides and be right back. All right, side seam or corner is sewn. Now what we need, we need to do is trim back the corners and the sides. And I'm just going to trim this back by, let's see, I'm probably trimming it down to about an eighth of an inch away from the zipper or from the stitch line. Until I get to this top one inch, I'm just going to gradually measure it or angle it out so that I'm not cutting this because I'm going to want this later in a later step. Okay, so just starting down here. Cutting all the way across until you get up into that one inch mark and then just angle it out. All right, there we go. So that's how that looks. What we're going to do now is lay some double-sided tape down along the top edge of the bag. Now getting to the side seam, this is why we wanted it to stay a little bit longer. We're going to butterfly that side seam open and continue applying the double-sided tape all the way around. Okay, going down the other side to the other edge. And again, we're going to butterfly this open, lay the tape right across it, right there to our start point. There we go. Okay, when they say this is super sticky tape, <laughs> they really mean super sticky tape. Okay, now what we want to do is remove the paper backing from the double-sided tape, and we're going to fold the top of the panel, the lining panel, down to that line that we drew earlier. And we're going to do this all the way around the all the way around the lining panel. There we go. I'm just going to add a clip here at the side seam just because there's extra layers there and I want to make sure that it stays. All right, there we go. So once we have that all the way around, I'm gonna add a clip to the side as well. All right, so that is our lining plant panels uh, complete. Our, the inside of our bag is complete. Uh, we are going to set this to the side. And in case you haven't figured it out already, or if you haven't already made this bag, yes, we are doing a drop-in lining. So that's why we folded this down. Um, because we're just gonna boop, drop it in and then sew it together at the top. Um, no birthing required, so yay for that, right? <laughs> All right, so let's put this to the side and we'll move on to the exterior. All right, and this is gonna be really easy because we've already done it. So the steps to, and to attach the outer panels together are the same as what we just did for the lining. So we're going to clip the bottom together first. And then we're going to sew across according to the seam allowance. Now this one um, is the same seam allowance throughout. 
So for instance, when you get to the sides, it doesn't change here. It's just the same seam allowance. So yay for that. We don't have to try to remember anything extra. <laughs> um, so we are going to stitch across here first, butterfly that bottom seam open, flip it to the right side, and then we are going to top stitch down each side of the center seam. So I will do all those steps and then I'll be back to show um, the final putting the sides together and boxing the corners. All right, top stitched here down the center. So now we're going to flip it so that, again, it's right sides together. Now this one, because I have that side seam, I'm going to do my best to really clip it right there so it doesn't move because I want my side seams to match up. If you didn't do a double panel like I did or a top and bottom, you don't have to worry about that so much. So just line up your sides there. Um, but I really want mine to line up. <laughs> I want mine to be just perfect. So fingers crossed, this is gonna work. Okay, so now that those are clipped, we are going to sew down each according to the seam allowance. Okay, I stitched mine. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I added a second row of stitching, also very close to, if not almost on top of my original line. And that is so I can um, get that little bit of extra support for the side seam. And hopefully also my stitches won't show through. Okay, so just like I did, just like we did on the lining, we're going to line up these center seams, clip them in place across. I'm gonna add a couple to the side here also just to help hold it in place. Okay, do the same thing for the other side. Again, butterfly open the seam, matching that right up in the center. There we go. So there is our two side bottom box corners. I'm going to stitch across um, both and be back to trim it all up. Okay, stitch. We're almost done guys, almost done. So now what we need to do is just trim up those edges. So again, I'm trimming it back to about an eighth of an inch. And then we're going to do the same thing on the sides. So trimming it back until we get to that top one inch line. And then we're just going to angle out to that, angle it out. So you know what comes next, right? <laughs> we have to do the same thing to this bag that we did to the lining with the double-sided tape. So close guys we're getting so close <laughs> I can't wait to see this one finished fingers crossed it works out uh, the way I hope it will okay 
Okay, now we need to turn this baby out. So, turning it through in whatever way is easiest, hoping that all this vinyl, see this is why we are doing the drop-in lining with this bag, because trying to turn all of this through a pocket or a small opening in the lining would not be fun. Okay, so once you get it turned through, push all your corners out. And this side as well. And just go slow. We're not in a race, right? You don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to break a nail. I've also had a nail bend backwards while I'm trying to do this quickly, and that's no fun either. So, okay, there we go. All right, so your bag is turned through. You guys, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's gonna be so cute. Okay, so this is the front of my bag because this is where my tag is. So I'm gonna have that this way. Now taking the lining, the lining is wrong side out. So your bag is right side out, lining is wrong side out. You want your slip pocket to be towards the front. So I have to turn mine around. The zipper pocket will be towards the back. And now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it right inside, drop it right in. And we're gonna line up these side seams. So the lining and the exterior, line up that side seam. Same on this side. Let's see, where is it? There it is. All right, we're gonna line up that side seam. And then we're going to clip it around. Now you want to make sure that your two pieces are level this way. So you don't want, for instance, you don't want your lining to be up too high because that's how it's going to look when you get it finished. So try to keep them as flat as possible as you go around. All right, there we go. So now that I have it all clipped all the way around, you can always double check to make sure, you know, just kind of look at it and make sure everything is lining up. Like this part here is a little bit high. So I'm just going to adjust as I go. Just making sure everything is nice and lined up. Now we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around the top of this bag. We're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. So this is our finishing stitch and this is what is going to secure the lining and the exterior together. Okay, top stitched. Everything looks good, it is so cute. I can't wait to see this finished and see how this is gonna work. I think it might end up actually pushing the, this back a little bit, but hopefully it won't be too bad just because these are fixed and they don't come out so when the strap goes through there it might be a little bit of bulk but we'll see all right so now the last thing we have to do is to attach our straps so i'm going to put this to the side here and let's grab our straps okay so taking our strap we're going to <laughs> come on you can do it i was afraid of this i might have to take these off to put them through Let's see if I can fold my strap at all to get it to fit. There we go. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, so we're going to bring it through. You're going to bring your strap through your um, anchor there. And let's see, I'm bringing mine through by about an inch, I'd say. Um, it's about an inch from 
the bag and hardware here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to mark a spot that is centered. And let me mark it on the front because that's the part where we're going to see it. So I'm going to mark a spot. Let's see. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, I think. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to mark a spot centered right there. I'm going to punch a hole um, for the rivet. I'm going to attach the rivet there. And then I'm going to repeat the step for all four sides. Okay, guys, I wanted to show you what I did, actually. Now, in the pattern instructions, um, Leslie has a tool that she has on her website, on Jolie Lee Creations. Um, she has a tool where you can mark and punch these, and they are in the exact same spot, perfect, every single time. I don't have that tool, and I think I need that tool. <laughs> Lo and behold, the things you find when you clean up your piles. <laughs> guys, look what I have. <laughs> it is the snap uh, rivet guide from Jalili Creations and this is the tool that I was saying I didn't have and I wish I had <laughs> since it would make marking the rivet spots a whole lot easier so yeah hmm, amazing what you find when you clean <laughs> um, it would make it a whole lot easier but what I did basically was I'm once I measured the first one I took the strap out and then I lined it up on top of the other strap and punched through the holes so they were the same on that strap. And then I just repeated the same for this side. So I just used one strap kind of as the template for the other so I knew where the holes were going to go and then um, that made that part a little bit easier. Okay, now we can attach these to our bag. So we'll do that to get it in. I'm going the right way here. There we go. Once it's through, now I'm going to be using rainbow rivets because um, I don't have black ones. I don't have black ones with a long enough post, and I definitely don't want this to be pulling out as I'm using the bag. So I'm just using, I think. The rainbow will look fine anyway because of all the colors in this bag. So that's how that's going to look. I'll do the same thing for the side. So I will go ahead and do this. I'll attach all of these rivets and then I'll take them over to the press. I will set the rivets and we will be just about done. All right, here she is. Guys, this turned out so cute. <laughs> I love it with the, um, the, the two panels. So to have a different base and then to have that tie in with the straps, I think is so cute. And I don't think that these, the way that these connectors are, I don't think they're too, you know, that they impaired, not impaired, that's not even a word. <laughs> interfered or impeded. I think that's what I was trying to combine um, the bag too much with them being flat against the bag. Um, and then inside you have, of course, your slip pocket and then your zipper pocket here. Super cute. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this so along. Um, this again is from the Marathon Society, organized by the Marathon Society. Um, I wanted to say thank you once again to Leslie from Jolie Lee Creations for allowing us to use her fundamental tote pattern for this marathon. And again, just thank you for um, joining me for the so long. Thank you for supporting the Marathon Society and all of the sewists who are participating in the marathon today. Um, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And I will see you next time. All right, go sew something fun.